I will try to make a short uh, review of uh, the current understanding of uh, or misunderstanding uh, of the nature of supermassive code. I will just try to sketch what are the, the main ideas around. And uh, most of the things I will show, um, I mean, I, I just wrote the subfields of that, so it's I'm really like a review. I think it's maybe it's useful to put the, the supermassive black hole uh, um, uh, topic into a, into a broader context of uh, structure formation so we can uh, uh, have some uh, more uh, clear understanding. Maybe. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Cosmology is, of course, our lambda CDM, which is what uh, we, we work with. And uh, it's not a mystery that that matter is easy. Okay, uh, We have uh, some uh, landmark in the evolution structure. The first, I mean, it's not the first, I'm just trying to get some points. I write it around. 3600, something happened, and I don't know, it's the equivalent of the radiation and matter and density, and so the dark matter uh, fluctuation are uh, free to grow. Okay, and yeah, it's interesting. I mean, this is really a uh, zero approximation, but we can write uh, the typical mass, which is getting non linear and given redshift, which is about 10 to the 15, 1 plus. Uh, the six to the solar mass. So this is the uh, you know the usual uh, called bottom up hierarchy of uh, structure formation, which means that small structures form first. Uh, so today it's, it's the year of you know super cluster, cluster of cluster galaxies. Uh, this is just to uh, put the uh, in the comment. Uh, Binance of course has a more you know, Different uh, behavior because that they can possibly cool, which is the, the main the main issue of all the uh, supermassive black hole in formation is if the gas can cool or if it cannot cool. This is the, the point. Uh, for the binaries, we have uh, I have uh, indicated three basic uh, landmark in the in the history of structure formation. The first is the uh, redshift uh, z equal one three seventy, which is recombination. Uh, where the universe gets um, neutral, <coughs> then we get oh, <coughs> okay, then we get so almost the yeah, hundred, which is the coupling, you know, the last coupling surface, uh, where the radiation and virus uh, are affected with the couple. But the, the important ratio for virus is about. 130, which is the ratio where the baryons are actually the couple for radiation. This is the ratio where the radiation is the couple for the baryons. This is the ratio where the baryons are the couple for radiation. So this ratio does give you an idea that the, the, it's 11 mega year cosmic time here. The, the baryons can actually fall into the dark matter potential world. And so we can have the formation of a structure, a baryon structure. Okay, this is just to to give you uh, the context. So the first, the baryon um, structure can act where we expect to see the first C for our supermassive black hole form in dark matter hills with typical mass which is around, let's say, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7 solar masses, which is the, the typical uh, proto-galaxy or, or mini hill uh, mini hill mass. Okay, so we have baryons of those reshit is formed into this dark matter uh, potential well, and what happens uh, now? It's uh, it's a matter of, uh, of two things. We have uh, cosmology and we have chemistry, basically, and, and cooling functions. Okay, so what I found is a uh, it's a nice uh, diagram which is. It's what which was made by I think Rafael Schneider um, a couple of years ago, and I grabbed from the web. So I tried to sketch this here. And I, and I, I added a few things, of course, along, along the way. So um, okay, so we have our uh, dark matter halo, 
to start with. Okay? And then we have uh, different possibilities here that I would like to describe and discuss in, in, in turn. So if we go from on the left or from the right, it depends on anything. For halos with virial temperature which is less than 10 to the 4 K. Okay? It's really bad. Okay, 10 to the 4 K. And with the metallicity which is less than a critical value. This is capital Z, this is Resh. So this is metallicity. What is the critical value for uh, so we are talking about pristine gas, okay? It's so called zero metallicity gas, but it doesn't really need to be zero. Okay? Um, there is a value for this critical metallicity, which is something that I'm going to describe is going to happen, which is around uh, I would say 10 to the minus 5 uh, solar. Okay? It's very low metallicity, but it is not cannot be exactly zero. I mean, it can be zero, but it doesn't need to be exactly prism gas. So, a question about this. Oh. And, and if it could be this is just about what you're going to discuss, if in that case, I'll just listen. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you might have guessed based on fragmentation arguments is that the higher the metallicity and the more effective the cooling, the smaller would be the typical mass of stars. And yet we really don't see much variation in the IMF over wide ranges of metallicity. So he's part of the argument that this is a really, you know, uh, kind of an on-off metallicity and that above that everything works normally, same IMF, and below that it doesn't? Yeah, that, that, that's the, the, that's what I, 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 that's my understanding of this, of this metallicity. Because this is what really uh, sets the, you know, uh, the IMF of the, of the, of the, of the, the stars that you're going to produce here, which sets in the end uh, the mass of the, of the black holes that are going to... So, so e even though cooling should be progressively more effective as you have higher metallicity, yeah, right. there's a switch somehow. Exactly. Then you pass from you know, POP3 to POP2 kind of uh, IMF. But I, I have to say that my, my understanding and my feeling is that it's, uh, this value is, is something in, in the literature fluctuating from 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 5. That for me, at first glance, is not a big deal, but apparently it is because uh, 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 10 minus 4, you have much more hills, that, uh, much less hills that can develop 10 minus 4 at a given time. Mm -hmm. So th this could change the, the, the statistics of, of, of seeds that you are going to, uh, to have uh, uh, as a function of the cosmic time. So the exact value, it's, it's apparently important. Okay. Okay, so uh, this magic number, I mean, uh, 10 to the 4 K Kelvin, it's, uh, it's important because it's where uh, uh, above the 10 to the 4, you, uh, the normal gas can, uh, metal free gas, so non normal, can cool because of atomic hydrogen atomic cooling. But below this very temperature, uh, you have to rely on, on something different, which is uh, H2 cooling. Okay? So in this kind of halo, the main, the main coolant is the hydrogen molecules, some rotor vibrational uh, trans transition. And, uh, and this molecules is, is uh, it's, uh, the most uh, important actor in this, in this kind of, 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 uh, of discussion because the the amount of, of uh, uh, molecular hydrogen is, is, uh, is strongly depends on, on feedback, I mean, on how many UV radiation you have, and we'll be back on this in, in a while. Uh, and, uh, okay, let's see. I mean, if the field temperature is small, which is the atoms are small, uh, we have to rely on the presence of a molecular hydrogen to cool down the gas, okay? If this is happening, then we have the so-called mini halos. I don't know if it's, oh, I need an E there, I'm not quite sure. And we have the formation of the first stars in the universe, which are sometimes called pop three stars, okay? Metal three stars. Uh, there is a, a, a tons of papers trying to figure out what is the mass of such stars, uh, the, the, 
there are uh, early works by in the early uh, 2000, I would say, by Tom Avo and, and others uh, with this kind of the first stars in the universe. Uh, maybe you, are, you, you remember that. And uh, at that time, uh, it seemed that the, the mass of the first stars, the top two stars, which are, you know, again, metal free stars from a redshift, oh, here you see, those are going to be a redshift around uh, between 20 and 30. Okay? And this, the, the, uh, this is, seems to be a large value in, in redshift, it's small in time, but it depends on, on the case. Uh, on, on the on the on the network that can lead to the formation of such molecules. So it's uh, but it's about 20 and 30 the ratio of formation of this kind of structure in halos, which is the mass of disorder. There are top two stars. So the question now is what is the mass of such top two stars? The IMF. Uh, I think it's fair to say that no one knows. There have been um, claims that it's a, a top heavy IMF. We have a very few very uh, not very massive stars, but quite massive stars. Other say no fragmentation can happen also in this kind of halos, so we have a, a, a small cluster of less mass stars. Okay. I uh, found uh, the latest paper by uh, the, uh, a group of Japanese uh, scientists who uh, have hard been working on these kind of things. Uh, I remember Umukai is, is one of, of, of those. And, and in the last, in one of the last papers, uh, they, they say that they made some uh, detailed simulations. Uh, of course, it's uh, the, the very process of star formation at zero metallicity, which is not easy because you have to uh, take a couple of things. Uh, and usually, the first simulation were 1D, then they moved to 2D, but you really need 3D because rotation can be, can be an issue, all these kind of things. You, you, usual things in, in star formation. But what they claim and is that you have uh, um, stars uh, with a mass which is about, uh, uh, it can be uh, between 40 solar mass and they even say about 1000 solar mass. Okay, this is what they, they claim. So they are, those are the, 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 the regime which we call very massive star. And a part of a, a, a range in mass which is between 140 and, and 260, where you have these parents of the supernova and that leave no remnants, uh, uh, you have the formation of, of a black hole here. Okay? And uh, in the latest paper that I've seen by Omkari group, uh, they have massive uh, black hole with a mass which is in the range. Uh, let's say 100 uh, to 600 uh, solar mass. Those are the mass of the black hole that they say they could be produced by pop three star evolution. Okay? I have to say that, for example, two years ago, the very same group say the maximum mass of black hole was 14 solar mass black holes, but then they changed a bit of simulation, so, uh, um, and, and details on the on the codes and, and, and now they say okay now we we, we have seen some very massive stars the kinds of initial conditions and all of things so uh, I, I I think it's it's uh, it's not uh, I mean I think it's, uh, it's well possible of course the issue is how many of those guys we are producing in a, in a volume and, and this is not clear at all I think so if you wouldn't mind going a little bit more into detail about that, I remember that there was some work by Athena, Stacy, and Fulcher Brown, mm -hmm. which was getting that lower mass you indicated, like the tens of solar masses yep. instead of hundreds. And the, their argument was essentially that previous simulations had not gone to sufficiently high density, they hadn't gone to the really high resolution, and that when that happened, there was fragmentation because, of course, the genes mass drops at higher density, and that this led to many independent clumps yeah. where one big thing had been found before, but of course they couldn't follow those clumps enough to know whether they re-emerged or something. Do you know what new physics is coming in to get this higher range? No, I mean, no, not compared to what you're saying. I, I remember the paper where they said that they fragment, but they, they were, I, uh, at that time it was, it was a few years ago, right? Yeah, it was, yeah, like five years ago. Now. Exactly. Yeah. But I remember I was at a conference and in the two rooms they were not, uh, uh, they, they didn't agree on this kind of things. If fragmentation is really going to happen or not. Okay. 
in, they, in this paper, they simulate one single cloud, okay, which, which enough mass, let's say so. So they avoid the, the issue of fragmentation. And they say that uh, uh, the, the, the new physics here, compared to their previous uh, uh, simulation that they found a mass of about 40 solar mass, which they, I think they, they have, uh, um, uh, it's not 3D, but it's 2D. So they can follow, they have a, uh, a bipolar, um, um, let's see, it's not, there are not jets, but you know, bipolar outflows, outflows of mass, yeah. and, and, and the radiation, because there is a, an issue with the feedback from, from, from UV radiation that, that, prevent, that prevent gas accretion to, onto the, 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 the protostellar core, and, and, but if there right. is the, the, this, uh, this bipolar outflows, uh, uh, that the, uh, most of the, um, the outflows of mass and also radiation that is emitted in, the, in that direction, so, so the mass can, uh, can accrete more eff effectively into the equatorial plane and form, and, and the, and form a, a larger star. In that paper, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the accretion rate onto the protostellar core is as large as uh, one solar mass per year, which is which is wow. huge, which is huge. It's, it's 1,000 times larger than what we see normal star formation. Okay. okay, so previously, in the 1D simulations, they had feedback preventing the accumulation of mass. Now with 2D, they can get the yeah, mass on. Yeah, exactly. So. Maybe, maybe in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, in this paper, I think they don't have it, for example, probably it's not an issue at such high ratio, but they don't have any magnetic field. Yeah. And we know that the local star formation, magnetic field is a, is a key issue here. We got this unbipolar diffusion of magnetic field that you know yeah. that, that sets a time scale of, of star formation in the Milky Way. Here, the magnetic field is totally neglected. Uh, but maybe a ratio, you know, about 20 or 30, you don't have enough yeah. magnetic field. But even if you form these clumps, they can just merge together. Well, that, that was one of the things I had wondered about when I looked at the snakes and Bob simulations because they, they ended their simulation with a bunch of independent cores, but they looked close enough that you could imagine them re-emerging. But it was, it's also not obvious, right, because if, if they are undergoing unbody interactions, a lot of them might get thrown out, so it, it might ultimately end up being a small amount of mass. Yeah, so I, I listened to a talk by uh, Thomas Craig, who is also in the group of... Uh, yeah, and, uh, and in 2014, he was just uh, talking about the same issues, fragmentation, but then they uh, followed the, 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 the path of the fragments in a gaseous environment. And so it was not just an antibody kicking each, uh, each other out, but they were just like, basically migrating in and merging together. So there's enough drag in the ambient gas to bring them in. Okay. Well, yeah, the issue that if you if you uh, you must have ambient gas, right? Problem. Uh, and so there is the the, the, the yeah. issue of the feedback. I mean, radiation feedback, for example. Oh yeah. The, those stars are very UV bright if they are very massive. Right. And, and, and the, the potential well is, is very shallow, and so it's it's possible that we'll just blow the gas away from, from the halo. And and there is a, there are some papers. <coughs> uh, so. Um, the paper by, let me see, sorry about that, uh, Ho Rosala uh, 2011 and Alvarez et al. 2009, they say that, that the further accretion out of this guy is going to be very, very low because there is no gas left, basically. Okay? Sure. It's 10 to the minus 8 Eddington, something like that. So this guy basically uh, evolved in isolation uh, in their own hill. Of yeah. course, you have to think that some other gas from other hill comes when you have and the those structures of uh, isolated hills. Exactly, exactly. So uh, th this could be an issue. Of course, okay. If we have this guy, <laughs> that does provide uh, seeds. Uh, okay, uh, the, the, this root is called. Uh, we have light, like of seeds. Then the, 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 the question is how we grow from this. Let's say a few hundred solar mass per core. Uh, and we need to be able to explain uh, the mortal quasar, which is uh, a mass of, uh, uh, well, I can't write, let's put it here. That is the mortal clock. Uh, it is mortal clock. Okay, so, 
redshift that's 7.1 mass it's about 2.10 to the 9 solar mass so, okay redshift 7.1 the cosmic time it's in, the, in this in the standard cosmology it's, uh, it's 0.76 gigahertz what, what is it named after? what is his name? oh it's the guy that, that wrote the paper that found you <laughs> Okay. Uh, so can I go back? I mean, it sounds as if even if you spend millions of dollars a year on theorists, they will not answer the question of um, how population of these stars form. So if you spend billions of dollars on a telescope, could that will answer the question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the re I think that, uh, let's say, uh, the, the questions that uh, um, we Possibly could see supernovae from, from pop two stars at uh -huh. very high redshifts. Uh, maybe James Webb could do something. Okay, mm -hmm. even though I'm not sure. And and uh, 40 meter telescopes and something. But I mean, that's about 21 centimeter observations. Would that tell you also something about? Well, 21 centimeter uh, if. Uh, that, that's a, a good problem for a couple no. of dollars. Okay. But let me say that 21 centimeter is really, uh, in principle, very promising to, to, to see the structure of the neutralization course as a function of time. You can really have tomography of the, the universe as a function of redshift with 21 centimeter observations. Um, low far is not going to do anything, and I think, uh, because the sensitivity is too low, but yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a pathfinder of these kind of things. And SKE, of course, could, could do something. The issue with 21 centimeter that even though you have a very nice map, uh, it's not like you know the CMB that you know what you're looking at. And you, you have to uh, make some interpretation of your, of your hot and cold spots uh, in the framework of a, of a fairly uh, solid theory of such information. In 21 centimeter, you, uh, even though you have a very nice map, uh, it's hard to extract physical um, information from that. You don't know if you expect to have a, a low, uh, I mean, uh, um, if you see the, the 21 line, uh, the 21 centimeter line absorption in emission depends on the so line alpha pumping. If you have a lot of line alpha radiation coming on, uh, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I'm not an expert on that. I've just seen a couple of, of, uh, of uh, more than a couple, several talks on, on the subject and, and, and People is not. Uh, they were more positive few years ago about about the, the 21 centimeter um, probes of the of the of the, of the IGM very high redshift. Also, you don't know. For example, this guy probably are emitting in the X-rays. Okay, so X-ray is it's another way in which you can decouple the spin temperature of the gas to, to the CMB temperature. But it's not clear how and if X-rays are really absorbed very locally if you have enough gas. Or they can they have a long free path of x rays in the IGM, but it's not clear what is the effect on the on the on the you know on the spin temperature and so in the 21 centimeter uh, uh, signal that you are going to observe. This is not clear. Uh, but SKA will, will will for sure it, it will provide uh, very nice maps. I'm not sure that uh, the interpretation of the maps <laughs> is going to be easy. Yeah, and for the record, it's still important to spend millions of dollars on theorists. <laughs> 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 theorists. <laughs> right. Okay, so the, the, the question is how to do it in, in less than one gigahertz from one to two hundred solar mass by cost to, to ten to the minus to the supermassive array. Uh, the time is short. Uh, if you apply a standard Eddington limit accretion, you have to basically calculate that Eddington limit all the time. Okay, but of course you can invoke super Hamilton accretion that basically can accrete whatever you, you wish in the, uh, whatever uh, you wish short time, and so it's not an issue in this kind of in this sense. But as called yesterday, uh, I think uh, right for now this not uh, super Hamilton accretion is not uh, 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 something that is well um, settled. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay. 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 So, well, this is one way in which we can have seeds that are small, but we, then we have an issue of accretion, okay? 
it could be. So I think that the, the superintendent issue can occur, uh, and uh, beside the the, um, the the problems that that Cole yesterday mentioned, that, that you, you can have these you know uh, photon bubbles that effectively can reduce the effectiveness of of of, of, of was doing this, so I the Polish donuts made by, by yeah. donuts and collaborators in, in, the, in the late 80s. Um, you can also have the issue if you have enough gas around the hill to, that could be uh, to, to fill the black hole, which is, which is the 10 to, you know, 10 to 9 solar mass of gas in, in the very center of the hill, which is not an easy, an easy, an easy task. But, but uh, this happened because, I mean, this guy exists and, 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 and you know, Somehow we have to deal with that. Okay, so we have uh, uh, the other route, which is in, in uh, larger halos with bit of temperature which is uh, larger than 10 to 4 K. Okay. Uh, in this halo, the uh, cooling is atomic cooling, usually it's collisionally excited one alpha cooling. Okay. If the density is enough and, and, and you have you excited the lemon alpha and your, uh, your gas can 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 cool down, can cool down, and you have proto galaxy. Proto galaxy. Which is in a halo, which is you know, it is a kind of semantic mm -hmm. distinction, that's a mini halos like 10 to the 6 and the 7. Here we are uh, ten, larger than 10 to the 8 solar mass. Which, so you tend to create just a fixed number. This is the Dharma hill, which we expect to see these kind of things. And the bit of temperature tend to be so I must say it's about 10 to the 4 Kelvin. And the ratio where this is going to happen is a bit lower. It's about, let's say, around 10. Could be 12, and depends on, on, on some details. And 10, I don't remember the, the cosmic time of 10. But uh, I should have written somewhere. Uh, wherever it's okay, it's it's 0 0.5 years. <coughs> okay, this cosmic time, the one that's the usual uh, cosmology. Okay, uh, we have the proto galaxy that we invoke something that I'm uh, not asking in the field, with some kind of dynamic instability, which is uh, the point uh, for everything. Where is the spelling? Where are okay? Instability in the hill. And then we have two different routes. Okay? What that depends on the metallicity. Again, depends on the metallicity. Let's start with the small metallicity, which is less than the critical metallicity. Uh, so, in this case, uh, if the metallicity is low, the cooling of the, of the gas is not very effective and we can avoid fragmentation, okay? This is avoid fragmentation of the gas. Uh, this Condition to avoid fragmentation is not is, is necessary, but it's not sufficient because uh, uh, this is what I uh, my, my understanding of this. Uh, you uh, if you want to avoid fragmentation, you have to uh, destroy the uh, possible <laughs> hydrogen molecular hydrogen that's going to form into these halos, and to do that, you need to have uh, a UV dissociating flux, which is uh, large enough. So, uh, there is a, a, a name which is J crit. Everything is critical. J is, you know, it's uh, the, the average intensity of, of, a, of, a, of a radiation field. And this J critical has to be uh, above a, a, a given threshold, which is of the order of uh, 10 to the minus 21 in uh, CGS uh, Units which are you know, average per second per stellarium per hertz per square centimeter, okay? <laughs> so okay, CGS units, 10 to the minus 1, which is, which is typical background that you expect when you, you know, work out galaxy evolution information. Uh, you have to have this value of the, of the background, of the UV radiation field, let's say radiation field, in the so called Lyman Werner 
band. The Lyman Werner band is it's a band just below the, the Lyman limit, which is uh, which is very effective in dissociating the um, molecular um, hydrogen. Uh, if you don't have this uh, uh, this uh, value of the UV background, uh, you probably have uh, too much uh, uh, molecular hydrogen that you fragment and you form a cluster of stars, uh, which is something that is going to happen here and we'll discuss it in five minutes. Okay? But suppose that we are above this, uh, below this metallicity and uh, J is larger than this J critical. Okay, the radiation field is, is, is <coughs> high enough to destroy, uh, uh, effectively destroy molecular hydrogen. Uh, the value, uh, again, there are many papers trying to figure out what is the value of, of the, the, the necessary radiation field to avoid fragmentation, and they do not agree. I mean, there is, uh, uh, let me say that this value is answered by three others of many. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, I've seen from one, I mean, 10 to the minus 21 to 10 to the minus 18. So. And I've even heard that it, it, there may not be a critical value, that it can actually depend on a lot of environmental factors. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All these all this kind of, I think, all, all these kind of arguments are, are really uh, simplified things. You know? <coughs> Here we have a very complex structure, which are forming galaxies, that are forming stars within an evolving environment. The feedback is, 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 a, is a something which is uh, in this business, but not just in this business. I think in the, in the whole stuff of galaxy formation evolution is something that is really crucial and is really poorly understood. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, but let's assume that we are all set here and then we have uh, the so-called direct uh, uh, cloud collapse. Direct cloud collapse. Uh, I do not enter into any, any detail here. There are papers by, I think, uh, with the, the, by Begelman, uh, Marta Monteri, and others, uh, figuring out what is the, the fate of, the, of, of this uh, large gas cloud which is collapsing into the uh, center of the, of the realized hill. And we have the formation of the quasar star, which is something I don't really understand. Uh, but we have this this uh, this uh, star, which has a, a small a small uh, uh, carbon core uh, inside, and a very massive uh, uh, envelope, which is accreting uh, like crazy onto and onto this black hole. In, um, the cooling is provided mainly by neutrino cooling, if I if I uh, read correct the papers. But I, I, I wouldn't put my hand on fire in that. But uh, in the end, uh, the, 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 you have the formation uh, of, uh, okay, let's, let's put it here. Uh, the seed uh, of, of our massive black hole, it's about, let's say, directly 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5 solar masses. Okay? So you already have, a, 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 let's say, not a super massive black hole, but a massive black hole. Okay. Those are the, <coughs> and the five are, are the, the lower limit of, of some black holes that we do uh, see in the, in the, the local units. Okay. Um, there are uh, arguments against these things. I, I remember the, the, the talk by um, forget the talk uh, by uh, Chiacconi and, and, and Elena Rossi that say that if you include the rotation of things into the quasi-star evolution, you you don't end up with such a large mass because you have rotation support of gas and, 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 and accretion onto, onto the, the, the small black hole which is forming in the very center it's not as effective and so uh, they they really cast some doubt on, on these numbers this is a Fiaconi and Rossi 2015 or 2016 okay so I mean I think that the issue is over. of course having such a large black hole from the very beginning uh, it's 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 good because you don't have uh, to to rely much on super electron accretion to, on, on to this guy to, to and, and, and yeah. I mean, is that true? I mean, you form a ten to the four, ten to the five solar mass black hole, but also a trash of ten. Yeah. So you have much less much less time to grow to, to ten. That's very true. I guess, but I guess it's pretty much the same. The, the mass in terms, yeah. The, the issue, I think, is it's more related to the environment. The, that you form these gases into, into larger hills where you have more, more gas to accrete. 
I think that's the point. The, the, the issue here, I think, that the, those guys are in, really in isolation in, in, on their hill. So you have to rely on, on, on multiple mergers and, and, and run against them. Yeah. Another thing I've wondered about in terms of this scenario, if you have something like a quasi-star, okay. it, it is held up for many, many dynamical times, an enormous number of dynamical times. So it basically consumes fast, at least that's the idea. But is it stable against pulsational instabilities? Because you've got something here which is kind of by definition going to be virtually at Eddington for the mass of the star as a whole. Yeah, exactly. And that sounds like a potential issue to me. I mean, winds might be an issue as well, but also pulsational instabilities are going to throw off a lot of the mass very rapidly. I, I haven't seen a paper that looks into this. Maybe there's an easy way out and maybe it's really no. stable, but. Uh, uh, I think it is, you, you are totally right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fan of quasi <laughs> star. So, uh, but I, 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 I agree with you. I mean, uh, there are many issues on the evolution of quasi star that can, that can uh, um, you know, cast some doubt into this issue. If I remember well, there was also this other paper by Fiaccone Rossi in which they included winds in the quasi star model. Okay. And with winds, they found that the quasi star was not stable. And so they had this very massive star that directly collapsed in a black hole without the quasi star phase. Okay, and what, what was the, ma the, the final mass of black hole? I, I don't remember. But I mean, what, what's about smaller? Smaller? smaller yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. But you don't have the quasi star you know, phase. Okay. Uh, okay. Then we have the last uh, route, uh, which is where if the if the let's say the metal is larger than critical, uh, then we have uh, effective cooling. Uh, the cooling of the gas is very effective, and we have uh, a lot of star formation. Okay, in the, in the gas cloud, in the collapsing gas cloud. And we have the formation of a dense stellar cluster. Dense stellar cluster. Uh, I can see a couple of uh, experts in the field, in the audience. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, forgive me if I, I'm going to say something which is not accurate or even wrong. <laughs> Uh, then a cluster, uh, then you have uh, a phenomenon called runaway collision. <laughs> runaway collisions. Okay, and you have the formation with this process of a, of a black hole. And the mass that I found, typical mass of the black hole is forming to, through this channel, it's about 10 to 3 solar mass. Am I correct? It depends on exactly what type of cluster you're looking at. So the, so the original suggestion is probably that, as everything were made by Martin Rees at some point, but when people were thinking about IMBH formation in the whole okay. universe, and they got something on the order of 10 to the 3, and the limiting factor is that, yeah, I'll never, yeah, whatever. Uh, the limiting factor is that if you form all of your stars at once, then the highest mass ones all have supernovae at once. And so you have a runaway until you have the first supernovae, and then lots of exactly. stuff supernovae and, and, it, and it expands. But uh, if you can have a situation in which you have a dense enough group of stellar mass black holes, then this is something that can basically proceed to higher mass potentially. So not only do you not have any feedback issues, but you can have stars that have already undergone a generation or so of formation. But that, but I, I think that's what you wrote is exactly right. This is really interesting because I was just going to say that that of course assumes you figured out how to stop the gravitational wave recoil when you start moving. The no, actually. Okay. So uh, it, it's not a matter of stopping the recoil. It's a matter of having a dense enough, a, a deep enough potential. Okay. So, for example, if you have like a nuclear star cluster and gas flows in it, it can tighten things up potentially. But that would be, I'm sorry, just one, one more thing. This, I, I think you're talking about the, the typical formation. If you're talking about how do you get the, the very earliest 10 to the 9 solar mass black holes, okay. those are rare. Yeah. And so as we were yeah, discussing yeah. yesterday, you can toss them into a tooth fairy or two. 
But here you're talking about something more yeah. standard. Yeah, yeah. And in that case, a density and, and a depth of potential, of what I have just mentioned, mm -hmm. is very likely to be rare. So it's unusual. And so for the normal situations, I think what you're saying is yeah, yeah, sure. The, those guys are really rare. They are, yeah, they yeah. are, a ratio of six, we have one of those guys per cubic meter per second or something. Yeah. So it's, um, uh, one thing that, what you were saying is very interesting, because one thing that I read in the papers here that, uh, the first one I understand. I mean, you have two, you, you have this mass segregation sort of the center of the, of the, of the you know, the, the, the most massive uh, uh, stars. Yeah. Yeah. And it has to occur on a typical time, which is lower than the main sequence time, to avoid, uh, you know, supernova um, driven uh, <coughs> gas outflow or something. Yes. But uh, also, I, 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 what, what, what my understanding was that you also want to avoid the formation of, of, of compact objects because the cross section is small. Uh, and, uh, am I wrong? Or well, I mean, that's, I think that was like, for example, the Portuguese heart in Milan, I think they did something like that. Or no, Portuguese heart did it. But the idea there was again, you want a dense stellar cluster. And you want to have crossing times that are small compared to the lifetime of your main sequence stars because they're sticky. But they also used a Velcro, what I call a Velcro condition, which means if the two stars touch each other, they stick. Okay. And all the mass added up. Which is probably not a bad approximation because the, the velocity dispersions are so much less than the escapes velocities on the surface that it's. It, it should be fairly, fairly yeah. good and lasting. But it wasn't until later when someone you know, kind of did the stellar winds issue that you had a problem there. That you couldn't, you couldn't take your 1,000 solar mass star and yeah. turn it into a 1,000 solar mass light. That between collisions, you lost mass. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as far as the issue of the compact objects, since those formed from supernovae, uh, the supernova condition is the one that they'll come in first. Okay. Okay. So the, yeah, the original idea was basically you make a giant star that becomes a giant black hole. Like Matt said, winds can be very serious. Oh. So even though the end you can have very rapid collisions, you might be driving off enough mass to more than make up for it. So the answer as always is we don't know. Okay. So, so it's anywhere between zero and a thousand. Yeah, I'd be comfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm agnostic on this kind of thing. I mean, I have not a preferred. Uh, Route here, and maybe uh, uh, who's going to for this one? <laughs> well, you know, from my standpoint, I think if you can get super Eddington accretion to work, it solves a lot of problems. Yeah, you, you don't have to start with any kind of <laughs> massive exactly. black hole. Exactly. And I, I think there are a lot of important questions to address with respect to that. But if you think about how a stellar mass black hole is formed by a core class supernova. <laughs> It had bloody well better have the super energy accretion rate. Mm -hmm. And that's an extreme and unusual case, but it's possible at least. So I, I don't. A, a lot of these things, I, I blanch at the difficulties, and I want to suck my thumb and think about super energy accretion. Okay. Not, not luminosity necessarily. Super energy no, luminosity, yeah. I think it's tough, but super energy accretion. No, yeah, yeah. So. mass rate. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I bet. So in the room where, where uh, when you form a uh, you know, big cloud or some big concentration of dust in the center. So what is the what makes the difference between uh, quasi star direct collapse or stuff like that? I mean in some of the models you go through a quasi star phase, in some of the other you just accumulate gas and you have a direct collapse, you form supermassive stars and stuff like that. You, Very know, you know anything? I don't know. Anything, but you know anything about? I mean, what what sets the what physics set, sets sets <laughs> between these scenarios? Because sometimes I see them like used in sort of interchangeable. <coughs> so I don't know if there is is there any peculiar difference in physics? There or? are only different phases. You start with a very massive star when you trigger nuclear reaction, and then the after. Um, very fast uh, burning from the, the black hole in the center, and then you become a quasi star. Right, but there are some, I mean, I see authors forming this, you know, black hole in the center and then creating stuff on it. People say, okay, you pull out the whole option and form a tentative force almost before. It's just, 
Yeah. I think so. I, 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 I was wondering no, if it's. I, I, I agree with you. I think that, I mean, my, my impression that if, 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 the, if these guys are right, then you can for very massive stars, uh, 1,000 solar mass. Uh, the difference from this uh, collapse into a black hole or these <laughs> things is not, is not extremely. You, know, extreme, yeah. mm. you have a, a, a huge amount of gas collapse to the black hole. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, of course, these stars are, you know, they, they, they are very short lived, uh, 10 to 6 years, and, and they're getting iron on limit, and so it's. The, I think that the environment could be, could be. I think that the difference is that those guys are in small hills and those guys in much bigger hills. The potential level is different. But, yeah. So, uh, how much time do I have? I have a year ago, 45 minutes. Okay, so I just put here my personal list of open issues, but just do, okay? All this. <coughs> My list of open issues is based on, on my ignorance of the field, so it's, uh, it's, it's personal. Okay, so open. Issues. Okay. Let's start with light seeds. So the top two things. Light seeds. Uh, I would say the IMF. Uh, we don't really know what is the initial mass function of pop two stars, if they are really forming uh, massive and very massive stars, or if fragmentation is important. And, and what I learned today is you can have, a, even with fragmentation, you can then the formation, the, the fall back, let's say, of, of these small stars. So, but, but I think that the, the IMF uh, is not uh, so clear if it's top heavy or more, you know, Sub Peter uh, kind of IMF. So we don't know. Uh, we don't even know, uh, which is uh, surely related also to the IMF, but the formation rate, let's say rate. Okay, we don't really know the star formation rate in the, in the, into, into the, the mini hills. It's something that we don't really know. And also, we don't know the spectral energy distribution once that we have formed a black hole. Because we don't know if those guys are, are, are X-ray emitting or, or I mean, the, the, the critical black holes are probably X-ray emitting, but it depends if the, uh, the effect of X-rays on the, on the environment depends on how much gas you have there. So it's, it's, another, it's, another, you know, it's another issue. Those are my three favorite um, open issues on, on light seeds. Then we have uh, the um, heavy seeds, which is direct collapse and another. Seeds. Um, there are many, I think, here. Uh, we have discussed a bit along the, uh, this presentation. Uh, what is J. Crit? We don't know. What is the critical UV luminosity in Lama Werner, uh, uh, in the Lama Werner band that we need to uh, avoid uh, fragmentation if we want to follow? This rule here, and uh, uh, also the critical uh, Z crit is not. I said ten to minus five, but again, this is not, it's not uh, a clear number. And also uh, the whole, I think Massimo uh, would say something about the fact that we need low angular momentum gas. Which is not clear at all to me if we do really have this uh, in this kind of objects. I, I didn't enter into details, but in, in this route we need some particular condition about the angular momentum of the halos to, to, to have uh, that collapse of the clouds, otherwise you have rotation supported uh, structure and nothing left for our, of course, for our uh, purpose, which is supermassive black hole seeds. And uh, Okay, I think that, basically that's it. Uh, um, there are a couple of things that I would like to mention in the end that are about observations.
observations in the sense that uh, uh, there are a few papers that uh, um, explore uh, the, the fact if we can see some signature of the black hole seeds uh, into uh, today uh, AGNs, for example, Cipher galaxies, this kind of things. And, and, and uh, I think that the, um, in basically you, you expect difference in the occupation fraction. Mm -hmm. How many galaxies have a black hole in the very center? And there are papers by who are on this, maybe Martha or well, something like uh, that, Elena Gallo and, and, and uh, Tomas Otrello wrote a paper on that. And, and I think that the, the issue is not clear, as, as, as usual. Uh, there are some claims that, that you, uh, in, in, according to, I mean, the different routes, you expect a different occupation fraction in, 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 the, in, 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 in local galaxies. And but observations, uh, I think they target the X-rays uh, with uh, with Chandra, the, the Virgo cluster, looking at every possible agents at very very low luminosity in the Virgo cluster, and, and but the conclusions are not uh, are not solid. Okay, they can say okay, the, 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 the occupation fraction, of the age, the number of agents in the Virgo cluster is consistent with this kind of root or that or those. They say okay, error bars are too large. <laughs> Uh, also, because the definition of, of an AGN at very low luminosity is not is not is not easy. You can have starbursts that can be in the AGN phase, and, and so it's difficult to process. Another thing that. that